Welcome back to the channel guys today guys. I'm gonna be doing a new screen recorder guys So this will be a new software. I'm not sure if this is gonna be great So if this is great, let me know in the comments below guys So we're gonna do this guys. We're doing our Champions League review guys of the season guys So let me know your thoughts in the comments below guys. I'm gonna give you guys my brief overview guys We're gonna talk about the season as a whole the best goals everything like that So remember guys to like and subscribe guys really does help the channel grow and we're gonna go ahead and get started Let's start about the final guys so my thing with this final is this guys right that you can clearly tell that manchester city were the inferior team right and that inter milan they put out a great game they put Serie A proud they should be proud of themselves of that kind of performance because what they did in the champions league final was unbelievable unbelievable right because none of us thought inter most people didn't think inter would be that great in the final a lot some people said that this could be a blow some people said this could be a humiliation some people said that you know and what's so fascinating is that you look at the teams that man city beat on course to getting the final Bayern Munich and Real Madrid in particular Inter actually played the best of the three I would actually argue Inter was actually man city's difficult most difficult test because say what you will about man city and uh, sorry we say what you will about Bayern Munich and Real Madrid the fact that city were playing the Etihad made a huge difference and you could see that on the day that city just didn't look themselves you know they were pinned back they had to come to resort b you know an interman they played well they pushed city to the edge they made city vulnerable they made city push y okay manchester city won this game on the virtue of their squad being superior right if i'm simon and zagi i'm looking at these players that yeah congratulations you guys did it you know you made yourselves proud because Inter did the most that they could because look at the difference between the two teams. One team can bring on Foden and bring Alvarez off the bench, whereas another team you could bring on Bellanovo, you can bring on Mikatarian. I'm sorry, there is not is not even a debate. The there's a clear gap in quality in both squads, and you can see how Manchester City, their depth was the reason why they won this, right? And shout out to Bernardo Silva, man. Bernardo Silva, the guy I've criticized coming into this final. I always, I viewed that guy wasn't that great, and he came up clutch with that assist. And obviously, Rodri, man. I mean, Rodri's been fantastic. The guy is unbelievable as a CDM, you know? And for Inter, man, I mean, you have to look at Lukaku in particular. He had a disaster class, you know? You know, DeMarco blocking the DeMarco chance, and then obviously him missing the header, and then missing that point blink. Yeah, I mean, it was terrible from Lukaku, man. And shout out to DeMarco. DeMarco was fantastic. Brozovic was amazing. Bastoni, Borella, they were um, quite on the... I thought they were decent on the day. They weren't bad. Uh, obviously, Onana was amazing, you know? And so for Manchester City, man, they got the most out of the breakthrough. And, you know, like I said, man, they did it, man. And KDB once again got injured in the Champions League final. I mean, this is so unfortunate. John Stone was incredible. Six dribbles completed in the final. Amazing performance from him. I gotta say... um. I gotta say, Grealish was underwhelming. Ruben Diaz was very, very good for Manchester City. He came up clutch with those, with those clearances off the line in particular. And yeah, man, I just think for Manchester City, man, they they deserve this. They won the Champions League, and it was just a great way. And obviously, they complete the trouble in the process. So congratulations to Manchester City, man. You know, those are just my brief thoughts upon the final. All right, let's go ahead and move on to um. Um, the best games. There were a lot of good games to look at for this season's uh, Champions League, right? And when I was thinking about the best games in particular, I was thinking to myself, what games really stood out to me, right? And for me, these were the games that stood out to me. Now, there are some audible mentions because some games didn't quite make the top five, in my opinion. And these are the following games. Barcelona 3, Inter 3. As painful as it was as a Barca fan, I'm going to put that aside. And from a neutral's point of view, it was a fantastic game. It was a fantastic game. From a neutral's point of view. So if you're a neutral, you would be enjoying it. It was a fantastic final, right? Marseille won Spurs 2. That was another great game. You know, especially on the final match day, Group D drama. We Marseille was going through. The Spurs was going through. And then they scored at the, at the last goal to ensure that they would top the group. Craziness. And then obviously Atletico Madrid, Leverkusen. Who could forget the late drama there when Carrasco missed the penalty? That was insane. Benfica 4, Juventus 3, when Juventus almost pulled off the comeback. And then Liverpool 2, Real Madrid 5. You know, there were some other good games you could maybe put in, um, you know, maybe like the, um, 
trying to think of some other good games. Maybe perhaps you could put Inter and Milan. Maybe, although I feel like that was too one-sided. Maybe Man City, Real Madrid. Although I feel like that was one-sided. Maybe the first leg would have been a better one to put here. I just feel like for me, this Champions League, for me, it really shined the group stage. Group stage was what made this Champions League great. The knockout stage, I'll keep it real with the guys. There wasn't that many memorable games. I'll be real and honest with the guys. The knockout stage was pretty underwhelming. And you know, actually, you know what, guys? I might put the Champions League final up there as one of the best games. I'll put it as like an honorable mention. Not quite top five for me. I'll put it in the honorable mentions. All right, best goals. Once again, there, like I said earlier, there were a lot of good goals that didn't quite make the cut. These are the best goals, in my opinion. Roger goal versus Bayern Munich. That was fantastic. You could even put the one against Inter. I would say the one against Bayern was a more it was more insane considering how farther away he did it. You know, and plus it break the deadlock. I mean, both ones broke the deadlock, but like I feel like for me that one was crazy because it something special had to happen to beat that Bayern. You know, so yeah. And then Adiemi goal versus Chelsea. That was fantastic dribble. The way he was able to get past the player and you know. Made Enzo look dumb. You know, that was crazy. I, I like Enzo Fernandez, by the way, guys. Vinicius goal versus Man City. That was another very, very good one. I could have easily put KDB goal versus Man City. The first, like, I didn't put that, though. Honorable mention. Grimaldo goal versus Makiba Hafia was an insane strike. And then Nunes, man. That was a nice back heel finish, man. <laughs> Darn Nunes. So, like I said, some honorable mentions. Like I said, the KDB goal um, versus, um you know, Man City. You could perhaps put... Trying to think of some other honorable mentions I didn't quite put. Maybe you could put down Lotar Martinez goal versus Barca at the camp now. Maybe you could put that one. Uh, I'm trying to think of some others that come to mind. Maybe the one of the free kicks. I think there was a free kick that uh, Benfica sc scored against Maquiba uh, I don't remember anyway. But um, yeah, the point is that there were a lot of good goals and that these are the best five in my opinion. All right. Let's talk about um, the teams that flopped. There were a lot of teams that flopped this season in the Champions League. Um, for me, you got to say PSG. PSG flopped a big time. I mean, you had all the money. You have M you have Eminem. You have the best trio in the world. Well, according to people, they have the best attacking trio in the world currently. And the fact that they weren't unable to top their group, and consisting of Benfica and Juventus, I'm sorry, it's not acceptable. And the fact that you got out of the round of 16 by a Bayern Munich team that had been in shambles this season is disappointing. See, it's not even the fact that they lost to Bayern. It's the fact that they were so bad against Bayern. You couldn't score a single goal against Bayern, and you conceded three goals? I'm sorry, man. That is disgraceful. You were completely outplayed 180 minutes home and away. I'm sorry. That's a huge L for PSG. Barcelona, obviously, if we took an L this season, the Champions League group stage. We didn't make it through when we had one of the, arguably one of the best transfer windows of all, arguably one of the best transfer windows this summer. We had to make it through, and obviously we didn't. Juventus, obviously, they flopped in this season Champions League. You know, they're in a group that they should have advanced, and the fact that they got ousted by Benfica home and away, and they couldn't even beat Makiba Hafio away. They sent to the Europa League, and we know what they did there. They uh, lost, and of course, Barcelona lost as well. Some honorable, other dishonorable mentions you could probably put is maybe Atletico Madrid. That was also one I was considering putting, but I didn't put them there at the end of the day. Actually, you know what? Maybe I should have put Atletico Madrid. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Should I put Atletico Madrid? Because now I'm thinking about it, maybe I should have. But I, I still feel like with Atletico, I would still... Uh, well, actually, no. You know what? Yeah, you know what, guys? I think I'm going to put Atletico Madrid over Juventus. Actually, I don't know, guys. I, I feel like it's already too late. But um, Atletico Madrid's a very close to just honorable mention. You can maybe put them there. You could also maybe perhaps put... um, You can maybe perhaps put Spurs in some essence because... Well, maybe Spurs is a bit harsh. Yeah, I'm not going to put Spurs. Maybe you could... Yeah, I'm trying to think. Maybe Sevilla, although they did win the Europa League. Uh, I think that's about it, guys. I think Atletico Madrid's the only other dishonorable mention I can think of. And maybe more say, although I feel like it's really, really harsh. But yeah, I mean, I, for me, Atletico Madrid's the only other one that makes that comes close. Teams are overperformed. Um, this was easy. There were a lot of teams that overperformed this season. Uh, for me, Milan definitely did overperform. They made the semifinals. Most of us did not expect them to make the semis. Um, they played really well. You know, they beat Spurs. They beat Napoli. Teams that we expect them to actually struggle against. And the fact that they're able to beat those teams was a surprise club Bruges. obviously they come through second place in the group ahead of atletico madrid and leverkusen is very very amazing for them although they did get destroyed in the round of 16 um and obviously they will not be back in next season's champions league 
Um, Inter, of course, they made the Champions League final. They proved everyone wrong. You know, they were in a group of death, and they actually made the final over the two clubs, which were probably more expected to make the final. So you got to put them there in the conversation. And say so, yeah, these are the clubs that overperform. Other honorable mentions, you can maybe put. <sighs> Maybe you could put Benfica. Benfica's overperforming. You can maybe put... I didn't put them here because I feel like for me in the round of 16, they were, it was a bit too kind of a draw. But you can maybe put them there. That's an honorable mention. And yeah, so that's probably it for honorable mentions. All right. Now let's go look at the team of the season. So this is the team of the season that UEFA did on the right. And this is what I'm going to do. So uh, let me go ahead and move my webcam here, guys, so you guys can see um, right here. So guys, this is the team of the season. Okay. So I ended up going with um, um, Onana and goal. I felt like you have to put Onana and goal because he got the most clean sheets and he was fantastic for Inter and the Champions League and is the the big reason why they made the final. So you know you got to put him in there. Obviously, coach is Pep Guardiola. Demarco I thought was fantastic. UEFA agrees, so I'm not gonna explain that one. Bastoni obviously he's Inter's best center back. He was fantastic. Walker I feel like is. Very obviously, very good option, and you know there wasn't any of the great right backs and left backs that came to mind that were fantastic in the season's Champions League. I decided to put John Stones in the center back position. Now I know he's a midfielder, and I know, I know, I just, I just felt like for me, John Stones just you have to put him in the eleven, and I, I felt like you have to put him in this eleven. So that's why I put him in here. Um, so yeah, like I said, John Stones was fantastic as usual. You know, the guy completed six dribbles, you know, and he's a versatile guy. He can play as a center back and plays as CDM, you know, fantastic center mid, sorry. Uh, then obviously the midfield is obvious. Rodri, KDB is no brainers there in the UEFA thing. And I feel like you got to put Barella. I feel like you got to put Barella considering how important he was for Inter, Inter's uh, campaign in the Champions League. So he is undoubtedly one of the best midfielders in the Serie A and probably in Inter. And you could even maybe say in the world. Where does Barella rank in the world, guys? I want to know. I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. And then obviously the front three is obvious. You know, Vinicius on the left, Holland up top, and then obviously Bernardo Silva. Now I was debating whether I should put Rodrigo in this. I decided to go with Bernardo Silva simply because he did against higher caliber opponents, and I feel like for me he was crucial. He had he played his role. You know, he was fantastic against Real Madrid. And obviously got that assist in the Champions League final. So it was difficult between him and Rodrigo. I decided to go with him though because I think he was more consistent. All right. Now we have some stats. Now there's a lot of stats to go through. So this will be very difficult. I hopefully make this text big enough to read. I actually originally put this into one slide and it was very difficult to read. So I decided to put it two slides. So let's go over the stats. Um, so hopefully you guys can read. So let's go ahead and start. So Pep Gordial is the first manager. Um in history uh european football to complete the treble league cup and european cup twice 2009 2023 for only the second time in champions league history excluding extra time there were three goals scored in the 90th minute or later coincidentally it was a lot same two teams involved in the only previous occurrence atletico again victorious after late drama portugal last season interesting interesting Robert Lewandowski is against treble, uh, treble. Why is it treble? It should be hat trick. Anyways, against Victoria Plaza and match day one made in the first to score a hat trick for three teams in competition one for Dortmund, four for Bayern, and one for Barcelona. Manchester City became just the third English team to reach the Champions League semi finals in three consecutive seasons following the footsteps of Chelsea and Man United, who both achieved the uh, defeat from 2006 2007, 2008 2009. AC Milan and Inter met five times in a single season for the first time in their history. The city rivals won one apiece in Serie A, but the Nazori prevailed in Italian Super Cup, both their Champions League semifinal meetings. Bayern won all six of the group stage games for the third time in four seasons. They are the first team to have registered a perfect group stage on three occasions. Benfica have now been eliminated in the quarterfinal stage in all six occasions they made it to the last day in the Champions League era. Mohamed Salah scored the fastest hat trick in Champions League history on match day four, netting three goals in less than seven minutes as Liverpool beat Rangers 7 1 and Glasgow. Manchester City were unbeaten in the season's competition when eight of the 13 matches there, the eighth side to lift a trophy without losing a game in the Champions League era and 15, including the European Cup. Inter became just the fourth side to take a two goal lead in the opening 11 minutes of Champions League semifinal match after Juventus vs. United, Man United vs. Versus Arsenal, and Man City vs. Real Madrid. Match, in match day four, Alexis Sanchez drew level with Arturo Vidal as the all-time leading Chilean goal scorer in the Champions League with 15 goals. Just shout out to Alexis Sanchez, man. Shout out to Alexis Sanchez. All right, there is one last one right here. Um, uh, let me see if I can. Okay, I'll just read it to you guys. I I think I 
It's a little um I forgot to do this. So anyways, Liverpool became the only fourth became only the fourth team ever to rank 15 points, only finished second in the group. So that kind of little blurred out a bit at the end. So, you know, I do apologize on that. I just I just realized now I'm looking at it. So, it is what it is. All right. Okay, now these stats are all, there's a lot here. So, let me go ahead and read this for you guys. Um okay. Aged 16 years and 343 days, Paris midfielder Warren Zaire Emery became the youngest ever player to start a Champions League knockout game during his team's 1-0 loss last 16 first leg loss to Bayern Munich. Sadio Mane has finished on the winning team of each of the last 16 Champions League matches in which he has scored. The last time he found the net but failed to win was the 2018 final between Liverpool and Real Madrid, interestingly enough. Club Rouge's Antonio Nusso became the second youngest goal scorer in Champions League history when he struck against Porto match day 2. Lionel Messi, Karim Benzema became this term became the first player to score 18 consecutive second consecutive successive Champions League seasons. Bayern now won the opening match in each of the last 19 Champions League campaigns, keeping 70 clean sheets in the process. Napoli were the group stage top scorer with 20 goals. Manchester City is the 23rd club to win the European club slash UEFA Champions League and the first new name of the trophy since Chelsea in 2012. None of Marseille's last 24 Champions League matches have finished in a draw. <laughs> wow. 24. Czech pl side plays and conceded a joint record 24 goals in the group stage. Yay, yay. Manchester City unbeaten in an English record 26 home Champions League matches since a 2 1 loss to Leon in match day 1 2018 2019. Erling Holland deferred against Bayern Munich second leg the quarterfinal, made the fastest player, youngest, to score 35 Champions League goals. Ruud van Nistelrooy was the previous fastest, taking 42 games to reach the 35 goal tally. So Holland did it in 27 games. Dang. Manchester City. Have scored in all 36 of home matches in the Champions League group stage. Wow. 37 years old and 54 days to be precise. Luka Modric became the fifth oldest goal scorer in the Champions League when he struck for Real Madrid against Celtic on match day six. And Ed and Jekyll matched the defeated Inter semifinal first leg against Milan. The latter also became the second oldest player to strike in the semifinals after Ryan Giggs against Schalke. Paris striker Kylian Mbappe became the youngest player to score 40 Champions League goals, breaking the previous record set by Lionel Messi. Wow. Paris have now scored in the last... 44 Champions League group stage matches since a 1-0 defeat by Real Madrid in November 2015. Chelsea defender Thiago Silva became the 47th player to make 100 Champions League appearances, reaching the landmark in his team's match day 4 encounter with this former side AC Milan. And match day 5, Olivier Giroud became the 62nd player to reach to notch 20 Champions League goals at the age of 36 years and 25 days. He's also the oldest to reach that total. Benzema's total of 69 Champions League knockout appearances is fewer than only Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi. Man City boss Pep Guardiola becomes the only becomes the only became the only the third man to reach Champions League wins, 100 Champions League wins, joining Carlo Ancelotti and Sir Alex Ferguson. Ma Madrid coach Ancelotti set a new record by himself by taking charge of his 191st Champions League game in the semifinal second league, eclipsing the previous best set by Ferguson. There were 304 goals scored in the, during the group stage, an average of 3.17 goals per match. All right, guys. So that's going to be a pretty much a concise review. I mean, I, that was probably more than concise. Anyways, I think that's going to be it for today's video. So unfortunately, there was no Champions League quiz, which was so unfortunate because I really wanted to do. Uh, but maybe next time or maybe on Discord, we could find, maybe find something on Sporkle, you know. And so, yeah, like I said, guys, please like the stream. Uh, not like, sorry, say it. Like the video if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new out here. Comment below your thoughts. Comment section below, guys. And remember, guys, to check out me by the pops in the description below. And also remember, guys, to um, turn on notifications to be notified whenever I go live. Consider becoming a member of the channel. And, yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.